Hi, just want to do a quick video on a segmented memory and in particular the way they've implemented it on this uh, new Run Schwartz RTB 2004 because it's actually um, quite significantly different to um, other scopes that I've used. Quick over overview of why you want to use segmented memory. If you've got a situation like this where you've got like a relatively um, sort of dense amount of data with quite, quite big gaps between it, these are sort of serial data packets, so if you want to see quite a few of these then you're going to run out of memory fairly quickly because you know, most of your memory is being wasted by just acquiring these gaps that don't really do anything. So what segmented memory allows you to do is instead of um, having a single trigger event and acquiring have much, you know, have much data you've got memory for. You can actually split the memory up into different segments and acquire data over multiple triggers. Now, uh, before looking at this, I wanted to look at how um, it's done more conventionally on the um, the key site. And I, I've only ever used this on Agilent key set site scopes before, so um, I don't know if this differs from uh, other makes. Maybe people can add add to the comments if they uh, if they know. But um, typically. Yeah, this is a scope working in normal mode with maybe zooming on a little uh, section of it, so we're decoding a certain section of it. So if we actually want to um, acquire a number of these packets, we just turn segmented on, we can select the number of segments. On this one it's limited to up to 50 segments. On some of the other ones it's um, quite a lot more than that. And obviously the more segments you have, the shorter the amount of memory you've got available for each segment. So if we just set that to say 20 segments and then turn segmented on, that's now made 21 acquisitions and what we can now do is we can scroll through each of these manually to look at each, each individual trigger and it will tell us a timestamp, it gives you a timestamp on each segment because obviously these could be happening, happening randomly, um, it could be perhaps a fault condition or something that only happens every so often so it actually gives you a sort of precise time and date for every acquisition, find out when, thing ha when, when things happen. One thing about the key sites which I actually have got is that when it's doing the acquisition, it's not actually displaying anything at all. So all you get is you get this. Let me just slow the rate of um, the packet rate down a bit. So if I, I if I send a few, a few per second, now, if I now do a run, you can see this is counting up once per segment. And also, you can stop it. Me, I can just stop it after three, and it's, it's now got three segments to, um, acquired. But it's not actually displaying the data while it's acquired, which is uh, actually quite annoying. So now if we look at the um, RTB to 004, again we're, we're looking at exactly the same data. So we've got this sort of serial packet, um, we can zoom in on it, so we can zoom on it to see um, a certain amount of you know, some detail. Um, one difference with the uh, RTB 2004 and also most other scopes is that you can manually select the amount of memory um, for acquisition. Key site I've always had this philosophy of well it always gives you the maximum possible amount of memory uh, unless you split it up in segmented mode. Um, that's because yeah, they've got the very high waveform rate which doesn't degrade with memory. Now on this scope you do have a choice of memory, you can say automatic where it, it sort of figures it out for himself, but it will also um, let you specify the, your memory size and there are some trade-offs so that at smaller memory sizes certain things do go faster uh, and you do get a high waveform upgrade, upgrade rate, but also it tells you how many segments. Now Ron Schwartz referred to this as a history function rather than a segmented memory function so we're just going to set this to 159 segments which is one mega sample um, record length and instead of having to go into an explicit segmented mode all you actually do is you go into history mode now that's stopped and what's that, what that's done, that's just given us the last 159 samples. So this differs instead of the, you know, the, um, the key site which is effectively you know, start it, trigger and then stop automatically mode. Here it's a continuous record until you manually stop it. So what we have here is we've got the last 159 samples. So whenever we hit run um, we always have the last 159 samples available in, um, in our history change the uh, screen a little bit so we can see a bit more of the um, history mode so um, so we can manually scroll through these these samples we can use the twiddly knob to sort of click through them one at a time it's just probably one instance where the um, having the knob have a detent is fractionally useful and we can also play this back um, either as a single or repeat so if you set the repeat on this is just looping back showing that acquisition again for um, any type of repetitive signals that quite can be quite handy. You can um, what you can't do is control the speed continuously. It seems to have sort of there's three settings plus A. I'm not quite sure. I think A is perhaps I don't know whether that auto scales or whether it's maybe representative of the original rate. I haven't really quite figured that one out. 
so you can actually just sit there and you know watch the data sort of playing back you can also um just say go to a specific segment so if you want to go to um say minus 25 it will just go to that specific segment obviously they're negative because these are relative to the last trigger that it saw before you stopped it but uh and yeah i can see you know this, this does have advantages if you're you know you're wait you, you're doing a lot of measurements and you're waiting for a glitch you can then wait for that glitch then hit stop whereas on the um the key site way of doing it, it can be a bit hit or miss you know you acquire x number of acquisitions and you don't know if that, that issue is going to occur in those acquisitions or not so I, I think that's that's one improvement the fact you've got this keep acquiring just until you until you manually stop it and you know you've got that you've got that um last set of data now of course one thing that this mode doesn't let you do is say you know you may want for example only let's say the first 20 acquisitions so for example if you're looking at perhaps serial debug data that's being spat out during a boot up process what you probably want is say the first 20 and you don't want those that data to then get overwritten by maybe further debug data that's happening later on now, for a while I was thinking, well, hang on a minute, how do you do that? But I then remembered something which I didn't totally understand the purpose of at the time, which was the NX single mode. So what you can say is that when you hit the single button, instead of just doing one trigger, you can actually get it to trigger a specific number of times. So let's say, for example, we're interested in the first 20 uh, acquisitions. If we now hit single, that's now taken 20 acquisitions and displaying it in the same way. So we've actually got the best of both worlds. We've got this carry on until you stop mode but you've also got you know i want to see the first however many triggers so i think that that's actually quite a, a nice enhancement so the only thing i'd say it'd be nice if you could um control the playback speed because the key site doesn't even have the manual playback the only option you've got is to, is to manually go through it and so there might be some areas when you for example you've actually got quite a lot of data and you're looking for some pattern, visual pattern maybe it's maybe less appropriate to see but if you're looking for some very obvious visual pattern or glitch or something on your trace then just be able to have it sit there chugging through it automatically is probably quite um, uh, quite an advantage. So I think although Run Shorts call it history rather than segmented, it basically offers you pretty much everything that segmented does plus this run till stop functionality. Um, but so you just have to slightly get your head around the fact the user interface is slightly different and you have to use it in combination with this um, NX single mode. So that's quite nice. The only other criticism is that this is an option and it's a I think it's stupidly expensive. It's about um, UK it's about £600 for the option, which, I mean, that is more than half of the cost of the entry-level scopes. So I, I think that's ridiculous. I think they really need to work on their option prices because the, you know, the scopes range from like a 70 to a 300 meg scope and they seem to have priced all their options based on, you know, the proportion of the cost of a 300 meg scope rather than the, the entry-level model. So I think that's something they, uh, they need to work on.